This is your Weather Extreme video for Thursday, January the 26th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters, and um, we've got another stormy-looking day with uh, some more wet weather to go with this already wet and stormy January. Here's a look at a couple of radars very quickly. This is a look at the Birmingham or Shelby County WSR 88D or NEXRAD, and you can see that a good deal of rain in the west central part of the state, and we had a few showers move through the area earlier this morning that brought on the order of about two tenths of an inch uh, of rain to the area. In addition to that, I wanted to show you a mobile, and that red line you see on that is the uh, current um, watch box that includes parts of uh, Alabama, northwest Florida, and Louisiana and Mississippi, and you can see that the bulk of the storms with a lot of the lightning is down in um, primarily Louisiana at the moment, but moving shortly into parts of southeastern Mississippi, and there are no warnings in effect as we speak at this moment. All right, let's take a look at what we think is going to happen today, and uh, it certainly is a complex pattern. The uh, warm front is moving across central Alabama. Uh, early this morning, and uh, the dew points are in marginal uh, ranges, uh, generally in the upper 50s and extreme lower 60s. And in the upper atmosphere, we're dealing with uh, something a little different than we had the other day. We had a negatively tilted uh, trough that was at a higher uh, latitude than what we're seeing right now. This one is a much lower latitude, centered over, um, well, not quite central Texas, but a little east uh, of central Texas, kind of northwest of Houston. So uh, the, the, the main threat I've always thought for this situation appears to be more along the Gulf Coast and into the Gulf, uh, although Storm Prediction Center has moved that watch box a little further. Again, uh, the warm front moving through the area, you can see kind of a, almost a wind shift there, dew points across the Gulf Coast in the upper 60s, whereas up here you have dew points generally from about 58 to 61. So things are not just as clear-cut as we'd like them to be. Again, the Storm Prediction Center, as James noted in his post, has uh, pulled their slight risk a little further north. Uh, not quite sure what it is that, they, that they're looking at, but it, it still appears to me that the primary threat is down across South Alabama and the northwest uh, Florida panhandle. A wider view of radar, and uh, you can see that we do have uh, a good deal of storms over uh, southeastern Louisiana. All right, let's get to uh, at least, uh, this is from the storm prediction site, and this is off of the uh, SREF model so that we can take a look at how we think things are going to shape up. And once again, you can see that the bulk of the higher capes are right along the Gulf Coast in the vicinity of New Orleans, but the cape values do surge up into Mississippi. Now, they're, they're not especially high. I mean, they are um, sufficient, shall we say, um, and that is at uh, 12Z or uh, 6 a.m. And then when we project out a little bit further, and this would be 21Z or roughly uh, 3 p.m., you can see that the capes surge up into west central Alabama. And I think that this may be why SPC has uh, extended the uh, risk a little higher. So that's the thermodynamics. Again, the thermodynamics, the cape uh, marginal. The um, Shear is not. This is the 0 to 3 kilometer uh, helicity, and you can see that indeed the values are uh, pretty good over our area, exceeding the 200 value. And then when we get to 3 o'clock this afternoon, they're still uh, in good shape. So it does look to me like the, th the primary threat is going to be across South Alabama. Uh, I would say something like uh, Montgomery southward, or perhaps even as far north as Clanton. But it would appear that the Birmingham area might be out. But we're on the edge. So the bottom line is, I hate to use the term, stay tuned, but we need to stay tuned. All right, QPF-wise, we're looking at some uh, rain, probably on the order of uh, about one inch over a fairly uh, broad area. And uh, the uh, National Weather Service in Huntsville has issued a flash flood watch for the Tennessee River Valley. Valley, It appears that heavy rain is a possibility. All right, we're going to stick with the 06E GFS model run and uh, showed that the trough is coming out of Texas. And uh, by tomorrow, the trough is uh, on the East Coast. So we're uh, going clear and uh, should have a sunny day. Temperatures uh, coming down just a little bit, but not uh, especially cold. You can see the 540 thickness line just as a guide across uh, the Ohio River Valley. We're now watching the development of a, um, a more um, 
latitudinal or a little more amplitude to the trough. We have a little short wave over the eastern Great Lakes and then another one over the Dakotas. And uh, that, in turn, is uh, helping with the northwesterly flow and the, uh, the deepening of the trough just a little bit, bringing the 540 line down into the vicinity of the shoals. Now, if we uh, go out to um, Sunday... You can see that it is going to be a little bit chillier of a day, the 540 line coming down to about Birmingham and Atlanta. So uh, definitely uh, clear weather, but uh, certainly a little bit uh, chillier. We flatten back out, though, again on the 30th, Monday, and uh, so that um, means that the 540 line moves back north. So we should be warming back up fairly quickly, uh, getting back into our above-normal state that we have uh, been seeing for a good deal of January. The, the pattern over us is flat, but a new uh, shortwave trough coming through Nebraska and Kansas promises to bring another round of wet weather and uh, at least at least some possibility of some showers. Let's put it that way. Not, not anything like what we're experiencing right now. And you can see the surface low over about um, Iowa, northern Missouri, with a cold front stretching down into uh, eastern Texas. That is on uh, Tuesday, and that's the last day of January. Can't believe the month is already over. Now the pattern again stays flat for us uh, as the main that first uh, short wave moves out to uh, New York and Pennsylvania. But what that does is essentially drag a front into the area. But because of the flow is somewhat zonal, the front is not going to get through, and so it, it you can't rule out uh, isolated showers with this kind of pattern. So it's uh, there may not be enough moisture for the showers or you know for the front to deal with. So we'll be we'll be watching that. But right now, I think most of us remain dry uh, on Wednesday, but uh, we'll have to at least include some some small chance of showers. Now the uh, short wave, uh, the little impulse that's in the flow moves uh, out of Kentucky into Tennessee. And of course, what that does is uh, drag a little bit cooler air back in. But again, nothing is, uh, exceptionally cold for us to have to deal with. And then um, as we go out into voodoo country, uh, it does have a colder look to it. And that is uh, you see a very strong uh, northerly flow coming out of central Canada and coming down into the uh, mid-Mississippi River Valley. So that looks a bit chilly. We stay pretty chilly through the 6th of February. And then at the very end of the period by the 10th, is anybody surprised? We go back to zonal flow. Well, thanks for tuning into the Weather Extreme video. Again, with the uh, iffiness of this particular situation, be sure to stay tuned to uh, the blog for the latest uh, information. We'll try to do the best we can to keep you updated. In the meantime, if you're local to us, don't forget to catch the news, weather, and sports on ABC 3340 at uh, uh, 4, uh, 5, 6, and 10 tonight, and I'll be filling in for James Spann. So thank you very much for staying tuned. Have a great day, and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of Central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.